Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial on using the workspaces within Premiere Pro. When Adobe make Premiere Pro and since at least CS3, if not earlier, they've been providing us with workspaces that we can use for different tasks within Premiere Pro. Now the default workspace is always the editing workspace. You can see up here I've got workspaces editing, but I have a drop down there which means I can also select a whole series of other workspaces. But if you don't have this showing, you can always access them from the Windows menu, Workspace, and get to all the different workspaces that Adobe have given us, plus some options for what we can do with our workspaces. So let's have a very brief look at them. At the moment we're in editing, this is probably the one that you know best, and of course you know that it's pretty much customizable from layout as you wish. You can move things around, you can move them up and down, backwards and forwards, you can mess it up completely however you want. But always, if you've messed it around you need to get back to how it originally looked you can either go to the Windows menu or if you have the workspace toolbar showing drop down and go to reset current workspace click on that and it says are you sure you want to reset editing to its original layout yes I am and bang it's at the default layout ready to go however as I say Adobe give us other options for other functions and probably the one that gets used most of all is the color correction one. So let's click on the word color correction. Again, I could have got that through Windows Workspace color correction. And this is the default color correction layout. Now the people at Adobe have assumed that we need some panels open, some panels closed, some maximized and some minimized so that we can do a good job with color correction. For example, they assume that we don't really need much of a timeline because we're not gonna be doing any timeline editing. However, what we do want is a maximized effects controls panel so that we can see whatever we've got. So if we've, say, got the three-way color corrector, we can get as much access as possible to all its controls with a maximized panel because we might have quite a few different effects in here. And so we want to have maximum screen real estate for those particular effects controls because we're doing color correction. Notice also that it has opened up the reference monitor at the bottom. Now the reference monitor is a clever little monitor, uh, not least because it has a little button down here. You see this button that says Gang to Program Monitor. Now let's say I've already done a bit of color correction. Let's go back a bit and look at this clip. Let's say that I've looked at Mr. Wright, I think, um, and I've done some color correction and I've got him looking just right, but then I need to match Mr. Wright to Miss Reed a bit later on. Now, if I go to Mr. Wright and I click this button to ungang the two monitors so that they aren't linked together anymore, and then I move my current time indicator to Miss Wright, I have the original clip with the effects applied below, and then I can match the two clips together by applying effects to the clip above. And of course, I have access to all my scopes. Um, I'm not going to go through the scopes at the moment, but on these drop downs, you've got a series of scopes. I'll just click on all scopes. You can look at all the different scopes, so you can not just go by how it looks, eyeballing it, but you can actually use the scopes themselves to make sure that things are absolutely right. And you've got the same things down here. So that's how Premiere Pro have given us different layouts. We also have a few others. We've got the audio layout, where they have assumed that we're going to need the audio mixer maximized. And of course, if you're going to be adding all kinds of effects, you definitely want the audio mixer panel maximized. And you might want the information panel brought to the fore so that you can find out about the clip and what's going on. So these are just layouts that Adobe have given us for Premiere Pro so that we can do all kinds of different things. We've got effects layout so that we can actually apply effects. So the effects control are brought to the fore. Not particularly one that I would use a great deal, if I don't use it a great deal, then I could get rid of it. Now, a little note. If I want to get rid of this effects workspace and I go down to delete workspace and I do a drop down, you know, the one that's not showing is effects. I can't delete a workspace if I'm in that workspace. So if I click cancel, and I change my workspace to editing and then I go down to delete workspace. You'll note that I could, if I wanted, go down to effects and I can click OK and I can get rid of that workspace. I'm not going to do that, but if you've got a workspace that you want to get rid of, say you've created your own, which I'll be dealing with in the next tutorial, you can only delete it if you're not in it. OK, so those are the workspaces that Adobe have given us. However, we can customize them far, far more. 
and in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to move all these panels around to resize them, reshape them, to get rid of them, to add to them, to be able to move them from one area to the next so that you can create your own custom workspace that you can then save and have available from this same drop down anytime you need it. My name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.